Chapter 4, Section 2. This is about carbohydrates. You're quite familiar with carbohydrates. They're what you get in bread and also from vegetables and in fruits. So carbohydrates serve a variety of functions, more than you probably realize. But before I get started on a variety of functions, look over here on your right side and you'll see their general chemical formula. Carbohydrates are made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen of a roughly one to two one ratio. And that N, that N is normally five or six, unless you're a complex carbohydrate and they could be a large number. And then on your far right, it's an actual linear form of a glucose molecule. Now the first thing I want you to realize is that that molecule has two functional groups, a carbonyl group and a hydroxyl group. If you don't know which one is which, you need to review your functional groups and learn them. Okay, most of us know carbohydrates are an energy source. We know that if you have simple complex carbohydrates, like from a sugary drink or something like that, you drink that, you get a quick source of energy. Also, like this potato here, that's made up of complex carbohydrates. That is a more long-term source of energy. And I'll get into why that's a more long-term source of energy and why simple carbohydrates are a short-term source of energy. Carbohydrates are also used for structural support. We can see these on these cypress trees from the Wakala River in northern Florida. These trees are over 100 feet tall. The reason why they can be so tall is because all the individual cells are surrounded by a cell wall made of cellulose. That cellulose is a type of complex carbohydrate. There's also some proteins in there called lignans that give those trees more rigidity as well. You have over 17 trillion cells. Some people estimate that to be around 100 trillion. All these cells have to communicate with each other, whether they're right next to each other or you have to communicate from your brain to your toes. You have these cell communications. Carbohydrates are incredibly involved with cell communication. Not only that, all the different types of cells of your body, you have about 200 different types of cells. Your body has to be able to recognize those as self from something that's non-self, like a bacteria cell. So carbohydrates are actually involved with your immune system, recognizing self from non-self, and in the ability of your cells to communicate with each other as well. When carbohydrates are broken down, they're broken down into much smaller molecules. And two of them are pyruvate and some type of acetyl, which is acetaldehyde or acetic acid. They may not seem like much, but in reality, these precursor molecules are incredibly important. They are at the basis of our entire cellular metabolism. In fact, we can make lots of molecules. We can make fats, we can make carbohydrates, we can make nucleotides. And we do those by using these smaller breakdown products of sugars. So pyruvate, acetaldehyde, acetic acid, whenever we break down sugars, these are intermediates and they're shuttled off from the catabolic reactions into anabolic reactions to make numerous other molecules inside of our body. Okay, here's some key words you have to know. So carbohydrates, they're also known as saccharides. That basically means sugar. So a monosaccharide, mono means one, and polysaccharides, poly means many. So glucose here on your right, that would be an example of a monosaccharide or a single sugar. Simple carbs. So whenever you hear about a monosaccharide, that means simple carbohydrates. They don't have to be just a monosaccharide. They could also be a disaccharide, which means basically two sugars. So glucose, illustrated here, that would be an example of a simple carb or a monosaccharide. They also taste quite sweet to us. We get these from fruits and vegetables. A lot of things that we consider vegetables like tomatoes and squash and cucumber are actually fruits. Fruits are the things that produce the seeds from the flowers in there, whereas a vegetable might be like spinach leaves or broccoli florets. Okay, you're probably familiar with glucose and another simple carbohydrate called fructose. 
They both had the same chemical formula, C6H12O6. That's the chemical formula. What that means are there are six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens. But because these are isomers of each other, they have a different structural formula. Over here on your right, we've got glucose and fructose. Do you see the functional groups? There's carboxyl groups, which are OH, and carbonyl groups, which are the C with the double bond O. And notice that the carbonyl groups are in two different locations, meaning these two molecules have a different shape. And there is one very important lesson in biology. Shape matters, form and function. Things with different shape function differently. Okay, you're probably familiar with soft drinks. Soft drinks taste really sweet to us. That's because they're full of simple carbohydrates, mostly glucose and fructose. And in fact, if you look on the nutritional label, they're full of something called high fructose corn syrup or HFC. High fructose corn syrup is about a 50-50 mix of fructose and corn syrup. Actually, it's about a 45-55 mix. But either way, it's full of simple carbohydrates. And in our recent years, we've realized that high fructose corn syrup may not be very healthy for us, especially when we drink lots of it. So here it is, Mr. Mackey from South Park. Uh, high fructose corn syrup is bad, okay. Here's why. Now, this is a little bit controversial. We're not exactly sure why fructose is a lot worse for you than glucose. We do know that it is treated differently and is correlated with some negative health effects. One of those is high triglycerides. We have not talked about triglycerides yet, but triglycerides are blood fat levels. High triglycerides lead to coronary heart disease which leads to heart attack, stroke, and death. Here's another thing. Aging is a process. Our cells grow old over time. They accumulate damage. And it turns out that people that have lots of sugar in their diet, especially HFCs and fructose, that it negatively affects the aging process, meaning people on high sugar diets and even high caloric diets tend to age more quickly. And honestly, this is a correlation and we haven't figured out exactly how that's working. So that is an area of active research. Here's something we do know happens, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. As you consume lots and lots of fructose, what happens is the fructose is shunted to your liver and over time it's uh, converted to triglycerides but it also causes fat buildups in your liver. By building up fat in your liver, it becomes less functional over time. And if you have gout, it can increase the incidence of gout, which can be quite painful. Here's an example of how glucose and fructose are treated a little bit differently in your body based on their different shapes. They are isomers of each other. They have the same chemical formula, but their structure is a little bit different. However, when you eat high fructose corn syrup, they're both easily absorbed into your blood. But once they're in your blood, they have different fates. So first, glucose will cause an insulin response. Insulin is a protein hormone. And what it does is it causes your fat and muscle cells to bring in glucose. So if you're active, your muscle cells bring in glucose as a quick source of energy. If you're sitting on your butt drinking a soda and watching TV, then you might bring it into your fat cells where you store it as fat and you get more weight. Okay, fructose goes to your liver. Now your liver can handle small amounts of fructose, no problem. It's just a chronic intake of lots of fructose becomes a problem, but your fructose will go to your liver and it will convert it to triglycerides, which is your blood fat, and that leads to heart disease. So here it is. So fructose and metabolized in the liver is converted to glycogen and fat. Now glycogen is another type of complex carbohydrate that we'll talk about that we can use for energy. Now too much fructose can lead to fatty liver disease. This is where you build up fat deposits inside your liver. What happens is that as you build up more and more fat inside your liver, 
it becomes less and less functional so it doesn't detoxify things in your body as well. And over time, that can actually shorten your lifespan. Let's switch gears. Have you ever known anybody to drink milk and have real problems? It's called a lactose intolerance. Here's how it works. You see, all mammals produce milk and they also produce an enzyme called lactase. That ASE lets you know that's an enzyme that breaks down lactose. So we all have that enzyme to make it. However, as we approach adulthood, almost every single mammal in the world turns off the gene to produce lactase, and the reason is quite simple. Our ancestors and every other mammal never gets milk as an adult, so you don't need the enzyme to break down lactose. However, some humans can actually continue to break down lactose well into adulthood. Some humans can drink milk well into adulthood. However, many cannot, not without feeling some bad discomfort. So it turns out that people that can drink milk as an adult, they have a mutation that prevents the gene from making lactase from being turned on. So basically there's a gene that regulates, hey, I need lactase, let's make this. But there's a gene that regulates whether or not that's on or off. So if you're lactose intolerant, that gene works normally, and as you reach adolescence, about 13, 14 years old, you turn off the gene to make the protein for lactase. However, if you can drink milk as an adult, the gene that regulates lactase is actually damaged. It's mutated. And by being mutated, the gene to produce lactase stays on throughout your entire life. And what that means is you can drink milk or any other dairy product that has lactose in it throughout your whole life because you continually produce lactase. If you don't produce lactase, here's why you get the discomfort. Basically, lactose, we don't have an enzyme to break it down. We don't produce it, but bacteria do. So the lactose gets down into your large intestine. So rather than being broken down in your small intestine and absorbed and getting into your blood, lactose goes into your large intestine where it gets fermented by some bacteria down there. And once it gets fermented, it produces methane, carbon dioxide, even hydrogen gas. So that causes things like diarrhea and flatulence. And if you noticed, I said it caused methane, meaning your flatulence would be flammable. Complex carbohydrates are large polymers made up of mostly glucose. This molecule in the bottom, that's all glucose molecules linked together, and they're formed by condensation reactions. So a complex carbohydrate, you're actually really familiar with this. Imagine a potato or rice. That's mostly starch, which is a type of complex carbohydrate. And like I said, they are made by condensation reactions. This is an anabolic reaction and it requires energy to make it. So the unlinked monomer on your right, that'd be a glucose molecule. And as you can see, it's called a condensation reaction because water is coming out of it. It's also called a dehydration reaction because the overall longer polymer, which would be our complex carbohydrate, is losing water. An example of a complex carbohydrate is starch. Remember, we also call that a polysaccharide. Poly means many, saccharide means sugar. So on the bottom, you see that starch is made up of many glucose monomers all linked together. And remember, it's also the condensation reaction, which is linking those glucose building blocks together. To really show the shape matters, there are actually two forms of glucose. There's an alpha form and a beta form. And if you look at your glucose monomers on your right, you notice the hydroxyl group, which is highlighted. And the beta, it's up, and that's the one on the far right. The other one is the alpha, and it's down. That small difference in the angle of that hydroxyl group is the difference between starch and glycogen to cellulose. One, uh, starch and glycogen we can digest. Two, cellulose we cannot digest. So basically, that one tiny angle of that hydroxyl group facing down forms starch, like what you would find in a potato or rice. However, 
If it's facing up, it forms cellulose. Not a single animal on this planet produces an enzyme that can break down beta-glucose. There are all kinds of bacteria and protists that can do that, but not animals. No, cows can't do it either. They actually have bacteria living in them that can. That one small difference is the difference between a 2x4 and a potato. Now, don't think that undigestible carbohydrates are unimportant. It turns out that having a high fiber diet is actually very important for us. So having a high plant-based diet is very good or supplementing with fiber. And the reason why is we can't digest it. But all that pulp and all that vegetable matter that you eat creates a lot of surface area for bacteria to latch onto and grow. And it turns out that our gut microbes are very, very important. And we need a bigger diversity of gut microbes. So a varied diet, especially lots of different types of plants, leads to more gut microbes or different types of gut microbes, which leads to health. And fiber, because it can't be digested, also continually moves through our digestive system and prevents things from building up in there as well. So high fiber diets have been linked to things like lower cholesterol levels, lower triglyceride levels, and potentially lower rates of colon cancer. So eat your fiber, that's Metamucil. I actually don't really don't recommend Metamucil that much because it's got aspartame in it. But the idea is making sure you get enough fiber in your diet is incredibly important. Another type of polysaccharide, we've talked about starch, which is made by plants, and it's in potatoes and rice. Cellulose is made by plants, is indigestible to us. There's another one called glycogen. Glycogen is very, very, very similar to starch. It's just got a few more branch chains of, off of it, as you can see in the diagram here. And basically, glycogen has a consistency of something like jam. But our bodies produce glycogen, and it's what our muscles use for sources of energy. Except we have to cleave off every single unit of glucose molecules so that we can burn them inside the respiration. Okay, so the last thing you want to be able to do is understand the difference between simple and complex carbohydrates and how they behave differently in our bodies.